That's right, we're doubling down and bending over because unlike Christmas, Striker Avenue comes more than once a year. Because <laughs> when Santa comes once, everything gets covered in white stuff and we don't want him to come again. So this is Top Moments of the Week at Star Trek Online Part 20. That's right, 20 freaking episodes. You people on YouTube have probably seen the last five and then we'll start showing you uh, one through... 14 or whatever that you haven't seen, but this is it. This is the end of the Iconian War. There are no spoilers as far as story is concerned. There are two characters that you will see that they're part of Star Trek lore. Uh, they don't necessarily spoil anything because of their presence, but if you don't want to know they're there, then don't watch the ending of the video in spots number three and two. But hey, like I told my girlfriend last night, let's finish this bitch. And then she slapped me. Uh, I deserve it. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. So you remember when I say they basically bring everything back? Well, you remember that scene in Voyager when you had the two ships that were trying to coexist? There. I just need a minute to you probably remember that uh, Harry gets blown out into space, or as I like to think of it, uh, death is gonna suck your dick. <laughs> there's there's Balana, of course. We get to see her uh, quite clearly. <laughs> there, there he goes. Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently that Harry comes back to Star Trek Online. Uh, Another alien species apparently comes across his corpse and it's intact enough to use it and reanimate it, so... <laughs> that just sounds really dumb when I say it out loud. We'll get to that in a little bit. Hail Satan! That's right, Q is dead and now we're done with this Winter Wonderland 2016! Uh, and that, uh, that's, I, I guess he's not quite dead. Looks like he's getting a pretty good blowjob, or, or, I don't know, somebody slipped a roofie into his cup, and, uh, he, we went through his pockets, and we found this disco ball, so we're just whooping it up. Uh, but yeah, we're done with, uh, Q's Winter Wonderland. This is probably the last footage you're gonna see from it. I'm done with that goddamn race I had to do about 25 times. And, uh, and yeah, this is probably gonna wrap up. Oh dear God, killing aliens that dressed as snowmen and with snowballs and snow guns. So, yeah, whatever it is. It was Q's fucking world, but we're done with it. Moving on. So, let's check in with my crew. Yes, I still have the uh, blue haired Asian that's also a trill. She's really hot. I got the hot Borg and uh, the big breasted Vulcan, because every show from now on basically should have a big breasted Vulcan, thanks to T Pole. But, uh, and no, I can't remember any of their names. So th this is, this is the J.J. Abrams Enterprise up top here, and I always thought it's a little bigger than it should be, because look at that Constitution class down there, next to the, uh, the Galaxy class. Look how much bigger, uh, the original Enterprise, or, well, the refit is next to that Galaxy class ship. The J.J. Abrams one is actually quite a lot bigger, um than what originally those ships were back then. Just something surprising. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship. Wait, wait, am I, am I still flying the USS Nixon? You can't, you can't have a starship named after that. Not, not in today's terms. Or what about the, the USS North Korea? Am I still flying that? No, sir, it's just called the Korea. Oh yeah, that's right. It wasn't North Korea, but you can't name a ship that either. <sighs> what do you think, Borg lady? The Borg killed my family. <laughs> All right, enough of you. Yushin, you are Asian and you're a trill. You are hot. Thank you, sir. Uh, duly noted. So during the campaign, you uh, you find this object, and it's it's in the Iconian War section. Um, I think it's still in the Delta Expansion. I can't really remember. I recorded a lot of footage. But you find this object, uh, yeah it is, because you're still fighting that, that one other guy that, that ends up killing Talaxians. 
So uh, it's part of the Delta Delta Rising, yeah, not Delta Alliance. That's something else. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty it's pretty interesting. You're trying to figure out what this thing is. You take it to engineering. You do a couple of uh, rather simple little mini game things here, where you're trying to you know evaluate it and figure out where it came from. So it's it's kind of cool. You know, they 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 really try to not just have this be a a slam bam wham thank you ma'am. Uh, you got me pregnant, you know, kind of movie. They're trying to not make it just all action. You know, they're trying to add these little elements to it, which sometimes work, and sometimes, you know, you're you're rerouting power relays, like that awful one on, on Druza Station. But, uh, yeah, so you're walking around the engine room, and you're going to go to Astrometrics here and follow down the hallways. It's just, it's kind of fun doing little things like this that, you know, would be in the show. Um... So yeah, it's pretty fun. Hey, Borg lady, uh, did did Tuvok tell you that I wanted to uh, knock the Chakotay dick out of your mouth? So once you get to be higher level, you'll probably start noticing these more around. This is the Odyssey class. This is the ship that's basically on the title screen of the game. It has the uh, the open neck hole uh, distinctiveness to it. It's mentioned as being the biggest uh, Starfleet ship that uh, has been built up to a certain point. Of course, I got the Presidio class, and as you can see, they're pretty close in size. Mine might be a little bit bigger. Ah, that's what she said. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's the Odyssey class. Don't know if I'd ever get one of those. This is the new Guardian class uh, cruiser that came out for consoles, at least, uh, just the beginning of the year. So actually, each faction has their own new T6 cruiser. This is part of the cross-faction one. But uh, this is the Federation version. Doesn't seem to be anything too special about what comes with it. I don't know if I would get it, but it looks kind of cool. Oh, dear God, it's a fucking battle with Harry Kim. Working. But if I do this, maybe I can buy some time. Well, okay, it's not the Harry Kim. It is the Harry Kim that got sucked out into space and died. And apparently this other alien culture uses the corpses of people and reanimates them. So, this Harry Kim still thinks he's the original Harry Kim from Voyager, and you have to basically create platforms and get to him. It's it's a long... If you haven't seen the show, you got no fucking idea what's going on. If you remember Naomi Wildman, apparently the same thing happened to her. Uh, spoilers in 3, 2, 1, Naomi Wildman's fucking dead! And apparently she got turned into that blue lady. So at this point, you're, you're, you're trying to uh, outthink Harry Kim's puzzles by shooting orbs on the wall to get to him, and eventually, you know, he he uh, he accepts his fate as a weird alien fuckhead thing, and so so you can finally move on. And the other Harry Kim's like, yeah, that that used to be me, and uh, so yet yeah, it's just what you have to do. Mendoza. No, oh, that's from another show. I ignore that. But yeah, so when you get higher tier in the game, or in the late ends of the game, you're going to want to check out the rep, because as you progress through the different tiers of a particular faction, uh, you can get yourself some pretty cool stuff, like this uh, Borg cutting beam. It's pretty fucking sweet. 360 degrees with DPS around 360 or something. Uh, I might be off on those numbers, but yeah, that's, that's where you get some of the cool stuff, is is earning those uh, those credits and boosting up your rep. So you definitely want to do that and get yourself some cool gear. So this is it. As the Iconian War is heating up and you got about a, f a handful of missions left, you run into this. This is the fleet of ships that is there to help you out. We're all here to fight the Iconians. It's pretty cool. At no point in the game have you seen anything like this before. Uh, you've never seen a mass amount of ships like this. Of course, you can't actually fly out to them or, or around them. So they're probably a lot of one-sided kind of like cutouts kind of thing. But hey, it's still pretty cool. Uh, at no point have you seen this up to this point in the game. So it definitely feels like things are different. Um, it definitely feels like these guys are a threat to the entire uh, galaxy that you're in. And this is just... Uh, God damn, I fucking love the Presidio 
uh, salute. I mean, this thing is grown to be a fucking beast of a battle cruiser. I've got, uh, what is it, like, dual Polaron beams. I got one of the, uh, the Borg cutting devices, uh, the Borg cutting beam, uh, Mark 13, and, uh, just, just absolutely loving this. I got a fast, high damage torpedo. Uh, I have other ones, you know, like the, 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 there's some that are like cluster, cluster torpedoes. Like, those are pretty cool, but, you know, I, I got pretty happy with this. Yeah, it's called the Oscar for no, no fucking reason. Um... But yeah, anti-proton. I got a couple anti-protons in there. Uh, the cutting beam definitely is one of the cooler ones. Number three. So that's that's my Borg lady, um, hot as always. And then I'm a little busy here. <laughs> what do you need? Tom Paris. Holy shit! Well, actually, he. He shows up a little bit earlier in one of the briefings, but I purposely left that out so that he would be a surprise, just in case you could kind of recognize him uh, in the background of one of the clips. But yeah, he uh, he's actually with you for a number of the last uh, Iconian missions. Number two. So toward the end of the game, you go back to Drozana Station. Yeah, fucking memories, right? And you start to help out some Ferengi, and then this happens. Son of Grand Nagus Rock. Holy shit! Not only did they re mention uh, the Grand Nagus being Rom, the fact that. Uh, yeah, Nog is back as well. I mean, uh, along with Tom Paris, they were kind of a surprise because the voice actors for Dead Rising were obvious, or the Delta Rising were obviously announced, but I didn't know these guys were there, so it was kind of cool. And both uh, Nog and Tom Paris end up being around toward those last several Iconian missions. So, yeah, pretty cool. cool Colored, colored me. me. Tickled hard. Uh, like a dick. Num number one is you actually get to go to Iconia and uh, see how the Iconians used to be, and I brought my crew with me, uh, including a, a Vulcan, just ignore her. Uh, but I brought my uh, hot Asian trill, and oh my, I just want to rip off that skirt and jizz on your fucking spots. And uh, the, the, my hot Borg, they killed my family! I, I know, they, they always kill your family. And of course, my big-breasted bimbo Vulcan. Uh, every starship should have one. And then the fourth girl. And, uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, you get to come to Iconia, you get to, uh, see the way these aliens were before they, they enraged their cock at humanity and decided to kill us all. So, it's a really cool moment, I can't spoil it. And so you did it! You beat the game! You saved the world! I mean, the Iconian storyline. And now you can celebrate with all your friends! Tom, Luke, Leia, Sela, uh, the Klingon... No, not Worf, it's this other Klingon that you've been fighting alongside for some reason. I don't know why Worf's not there, I'm sure he'll hug you later. But, but that's it! You, you beat the storyline! Ah, the end of a trilogy. And now you're in San Francisco, so you can do all the things that people do in San Francisco. You can ride on a trolley, uh, suck on a lollipop, uh, go on a gay cruise. I mean, I'm not one to judge. I mean, if that's your thing, I mean, you can do it now. I mean, basically the world is at your fingertips. Nope, that's not good phrasing, doesn't sound good. But anyway, the Iconian storyline is now done. We've got more DLC and other stuff to do, but it's kind of a nice little ending. Uh, just to kind of pause and remember, uh, thanks Gene Roddenberry, thanks for creating Star Wars. Go shorty, it's your birthday, why don't you click on another motherfucking clip now? I mean, the video, I mean... I'm sorry, I gotta reach sometimes. I just don't want to be the one to keep saying like, comment, and subscribe before you even watch my video. I mean, that just seems dishonest. So hey, if you like it, like it. And if you want to keep watching more, keep watching more. Thank you much.